Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube tech guy. Hey guys, so today's video is all about the must-know tips and tricks for the Galaxy Tab S8 series. Now we have the 8 Ultra here, but you can use these same tags on the regular 8 or the 8 Plus. Now, important to note, we're gonna go over how to save a lot of battery life, how to make it a lot faster, and regular overall convenience factors that are gonna make your experience much better. So let's get started. You can go ahead and skip and go to exactly where you want to know and make sure that you get the best experience overall possible, including future videos where we're gonna have to go over must have apps and other features for this tablet. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, the best tip and trick I can offer you quite frankly on this tablet is to get an app right away. This app can be found on the Play Store and it's called Rotation Control. Now what this allows for is when you open it up, you can select several things at the top and the must have is landscape locked. That means every single app has to open in landscape mode, which means that every app you launch is going to be in landscape mode, nice and perfect. We also have a video on how to get the best version of Twitter for tablets. So again, make sure to subscribe to check out all the videos that you need to know for this tablet. Now the second must have app can actually be found in the Samsung Galaxy Store. Now this does depend on your region, so if you don't see it, but basically, Good Lock is the app that Samsung makes to get you better features that come on the tablet and you get it now instead of having to wait for it to be in developers, beta mode and all this kind of stuff. By the time this tablet is old, it might get some of these features, but Good Lock lets you have them now. So really, really important feature and just so, so great. I've done a full video on this, so I'll help go ahead and leave that in the description, but it definitely just makes it so much better, including things like Pentastic, one-handed operation is something that I use all the time. All of these different things are just going to make your overall tablet experience so much better. And now let's get to making your home screen quicker and part of your phone quicker. So first of all, disable this whole left section. I would say if you want Samsung free or Google, just use their actual apps instead of having it be to the left. The reason is, is this is going to make your overall smoother experience much faster as you actually use this tablet. Then you wanna get rid of any junk that you don't necessarily use. So while it's a great app for the S Pen, if you are very artistic, I do not use Pen Up, so I will actually get rid of it. This does come with it, but you can uninstall or disable any app that you do not intend to use as long as it's not a primary app. Now, what do I mean by that? Something like Google Assistant, Gmail, something that you need to have on this tablet in order for other things to work, like the Play Store, like anything that you do not know if it's crucial to it, then leave it alone. But things that, again, I don't need, like Samsung Global, I always uninstall Spotify because YouTube music is better. So a lot of things like that, just it's so much better off and you will have a much better experience and your tablet will begin to go faster because it doesn't have all these background apps using up your memory or your storage. And then this next feature is a very important one and it's changed over the years. So I wanna make sure you know how to do it now. See, this tablet actually has a way of sending high quality photos and videos through any instant messenger service or even 4K videos over email. And it's very unique in Samsung that other devices don't have it. So this can even be sent to an iOS device, whether it be an iPad or an iPhone or even a MacBook. You can actually send high end quality videos regardless of what other device they have. So say I want to send my mom some videos of her grandkids. Well, then I can just click share. And then from here, I can click quick share. Now, very important to note with this, that quick share can send to local devices if you have them, but if there are no local devices and you want to send over the internet, you're just going to click share in app. Now, when it comes to these apps, you can share in a lot of these different ones, but I would say the best way to share is just going to be to copy link. Now you can share in more if you choose to and see all of these different apps you can share with. 
but you can also just copy link and share in any of them right away. But as you can see, it doesn't matter if you need to share an uncompressed file in Teams. So Teams, for instance, I use it at work. It takes forever to send a product in terms of a high quality video on there. And then it's always buggy. So if I do quick share and copy the link, send it in there, it's so much faster. Same thing for instant messaging, same thing for Facebook. And again, this is uncompressed. So it's a much better quality than any way else you can share it. And it's a lot quicker too, no matter what other device they have. Okay, and now we're gonna be going through all of these settings. So follow along again to make sure that you get all of the best tips. So first thing is gonna be Wi-Fi. When you're on your Wi-Fi and you want to make sure to share it with someone else, well, you just clap this settings button over here and then just tap QR code at the bottom left right here. That'll give anyone the ability to be able to jump on your Wi-Fi without you needing to give them the password or anything else that may normally be needed. Now, another setting in Wi-Fi you want to click is advanced. And when you're in advanced, you want to make sure to turn sync with Samsung Cloud on. That pops up my email, so I'm not gonna click it just for right now, but I would normally have it on, as well as turning on detect suspicious networks. That's just a good way to make sure that you're not doing anything bad on there. And another good thing is to analyze Wi-Fi patterns if you need to turn it off. This is really good if you have a bad Wi-Fi signal and it's just not worth trying to keep it connected, that this will allow you to make sure that it turns off when it needs to. Very simple and again, gonna save you some battery life. So the main thing to know about the Bluetooth menu is that Samsung does have a really great feature that a lot of other tablets don't have. And that is you can connect to two devices at the same time so that's really important because if two of you have a pair of headphones and you want to watch the same movie, well, you can do that actually. You don't need to both only get one earpiece. You can both sync them at the same time and it will work. Now, depending on how old these Bluetooth devices are, it might be a little out of sync. So just know that the newer the Bluetooth headset, the better the connection will be. All right, and now one of the most important parts to save some battery is going to be under data usage and then Wi-Fi data usage. Unless you have the LTE model, then you will have both 5G and data usage here. So here's the thing. With this whole section, you are going to want to check on it every two weeks or so to see if any app you downloaded is using a lot of data in the background because that does drain your battery life. So if I wanted to say stop YouTube from doing that, as you can see, it takes a lot of data in the background sometimes. Uh, I want it to though, so I'm fine with it. Turn off allow background data usage. This is really handy, especially if you have a lot of apps like Facebook, like other things that are constantly taking your Wi-Fi connection and using it when you're on the go and you maybe don't want them to. This makes it so that they cannot use your data when you do not have the app open. If that sounds good to you, then make sure you periodically check on this so you can make sure that whatever app is running in the background, you make sure that you do not want it running as data. Say it's something like Adobe Reader, I don't need that using data in the background. I also don't need a lot of games using data in the background. These are examples of ones that you might wanna disable so that, hey, I don't need you to run in the background, simple as that, boom, I'm done. Very simple, very easy, but very effective. Okay, now this one is huge, huge. When you connect your first pair of Bluetooth headphones to this device, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is scroll down and go to sound quality and effects. What this does is not only allows you to turn on Dolby Atmos, which you definitely should, but it makes you turn on adapt sound. This is really big because this customizes your sound to you. I'm telling you, after you use this, it's a night and day difference. You will never hear anything the same again on this tablet. It will be so much better, so much richer, exactly catered to your ears. It does a hearing test with both ears and personalizes the audio for you. Do this immediately as soon as you connect to bear Bluetooth headphones, because trust me, you will be amazed at the difference. All right, so for notifications, there are two different ways to go about it. I like details, 
but if you do put on brief instead of details, then you can allow for brief pop-up settings to turn on edge lighting. So what this does is it allows you to do different types of edge lighting depending on what you like. So that basically you can have all these different effects. I personally like spotlight, but you can have all these different effects for whatever you need. One other thing for notifications is in advanced settings, you can actually turn on the show the snooze button. This always used to exist for other tablets, but I don't know why in the new version of Android they've gotten rid of it I think people really like just so you can snooze it for like half an hour an hour whatever you need to just so you can get back to it later but you don't need to know about it right this second I would also show date battery percentage and limit your icons to three so they don't look so messy okay now display is a big one now first part is going to be catered towards the tab s8 plus and the tab s8 ultra these devices have AMOLED displays so if you put it on dark, you will save an hour to an hour and a half of battery life just by doing that alone. It basically makes the entire interface black instead of white. And in an AMOLED display, every black part of the screen means that that part of the screen is off. So it can really help you out in terms of battery life. I also turn off the adaptive brightness. If you keep it around, you know, I have it a little bit lower right now for this video so it's not overexposed but typically I have it around here 70 to 80 percent and what that does is it makes it so that your screen isn't constantly going up and down and using a sensor every single second it's on just to adapt your brightness this is much better and it will save you battery life then you have motion smoothness now the part you want to know about this is is high motion smoothness is going to give you that better look and overall make your device go faster but there is a trade-off in that if you go to standard, you will typically save again about an hour battery life. On some other devices, it's half an hour, but because of the regular battery length of this tablet, it will save you about a full hour battery life in my testing. So depending on what you need, I would leave it on high if you want faster, or if you put it to standard, it will actually save you a good amount of battery. Then one part I wanna let you know about is full screen apps. Samsung, I do not know why you do not have this on by default for every app, but I would say if you don't want to view this notch all the time, you can actually block the whole thing so that it's black at the top on any app. Unfortunately, Samsung is not making this default for all apps. That's what I would like to see. I don't have another app like hide the notch used to work. It does not work on this tablet. So I will be looking for a solution to get rid of the notch in the upcoming videos, but that is one thing you can do manually for each and every app. You can actually make it so it hides the cutout. So if there's a specific app that you use a lot, you can basically just go hide the cutout and then it will work. Edge panel. Edge panel is definitely something you want to have on at all times. I use it especially to add split screen apps. So this allows me to use a lot of apps that I would normally use in split screen mode. So for social media, for work, whatever I need, if I need two apps at the same time, hey, I can do it. Very simple and very easy, but such a quality of life. And that's the main one I would say I would use for the edge panels. Other ones do exist, so you can do a lot of different things with it, but apps in split screen are key in this tablet. And then if you do plan on putting a screen protector on this, you are going to want to make sure your touch sensitivity is on just to give you a much faster and better experience because without that being on, you might not always get the taps correctly, but once this is on, you'll do fine. Okay, so for your home screen, you can do a lot more on good lock, but built into this, you do have a couple of things. Now, as you can see, I've gotten really a lot bigger. This is some features on good lock. And I make sure, again, to turn off the home screen to the left side for Google Discovery. You can also make it so you can hide apps. Obviously, you always want to have this part off because that gets really annoying if every app you add goes onto your home screen. This is an iOS. And you also want to make sure that when you swipe down, you go to the notification panel. That just makes it very easy to just basically immediately go to your notifications like that. Okay, on lock screen, this is really important and that is 
to turn on smart lock depending on where you are. So what smart lock does is it allows you to basically when at certain locations not need to put in your password. This will save you time and energy so that you don't need to always put in your password. So if you're at a trusted location like maybe your house, maybe you don't need your password then. Maybe you do if you have kids. Maybe you don't need your password at work because you just need to get into whatever you need to and you don't have to worry about it. Wherever you might not need your password, this is something good to turn on. I personally don't need it at work or home, so I always have that on then and there. For biometrics and security, you do want to turn on one thing and that is Find My Mobile. What this will allow for is for you to remote access your tablet if it ever gets lost or stolen. What this does is basically shuts the tablet off. You need a password in order to log in. And as long as it is by a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connection and is turned on, it will tell you where it is. So this is a really good feature and one you should definitely always know about so that you can give yourself the best form of security in terms of being able to find your device. Now, another really great form of security is Secure Folder. Now, this is a little complicated, so follow me here. What this allows for is for you to have two, kind of two tablets, a work tablet and a personal tablet, or a personal tablet and a private tablet. So essentially what you can do is if you have to sign into work and you do not want them to have access to everything on this tablet, that's fine. Just set up your work account on secure folder. They will have zero access to your personal library. Any access you give them, guess what? They cannot get out of that section and they cannot see what's on your personal device. Really great feature if you're bringing this to work. Not only that, but you also have the ability to have, again, two different tablets if you want a personal private one. So what this this allows for is for you to have multiple versions of apps with different sign-ins. So you can have a public Snapchat or a public Instagram that everybody knows about. Then you can go over to your secure folder and you can have a private Snapchat or a private Instagram that no one else knows you have. Then the last thing in the biometrics and security you should know about is private share. Private share is a really great way to share something with someone and then revoke their privileges. Essentially what this does is it allows you to share something with a limited stamp. So if you ever want to, you can unshare it and it deletes itself and makes itself encrypted so that they can't do anything with the file. They can't see it, they can't view it, they can't share it, they can't unencrypt it. It basically makes it useless and you did that because you shared it with private share. So for this next part, we're going to accounts and backup. And essentially you just want to make sure that you are backing up everything from your device, whether it be to Samsung cloud or whether it be to Google cloud, you want to do it on a periodic basis, just so you that you have everything backed up that you need. You can also back it up onto an SD card if you have that with Samsung smart switch. So what this will do is if you ever get a new tablet, you can actually immediately just take out the SD card, put it in, open this part and take everything from the SD card that was on your old tablet on there. Very simple, very easy, effective to make sure that your backup is done and good. Okay, and then we go to advanced features. There's a lot here to unpack, so let's get to it. First of all, call or text other devices. If you want to be able to call or text messages from your tablet from your phone, you turn that on, you link them both up, and now you can text message from your tablet or pick up a call from your tablet even though your phone might be in the other room, as long as they're in the same Wi-Fi location, you're good to go. Okay, then from here, you do have Samsung DeX, which again, we'll go in that in another video, but it basically makes your tablet look more like a computer. And you can do that, especially if you have the keyboard. But for now, let's go into labs. So labs, basically you want to turn everything on. You want every app to be able to go into multi-screen, which you normally couldn't. You want to auto-rotate apps when you need to. You want to pin your favorite apps. You want to have all these things on. It's just a great experience to add on to it. And you can tap each one to find out what each one does. Then you have S Pen. So S Pen, there's a couple of things you can do. You can unlock your device with S Pen. You can change the click features. So air actions basically come built in with it. And normally if you double click it, you pop up a note to type on or you hold it down to launch your camera. These are things you can change and do it how you want. Plus you can do other things like screen off memo, really great to have. Basically when your screen is off, you just take the S Pen out and start writing. Simple and easy to do. Then you also have S Pen a text so that when you hover over a text section, you can just start 
to right. Now, some other ones, you'll have to tap it and then the writing section will come up here. It just depends if they use Samsung's S Pen built in to their apps or if they don't. For the side key, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that launches your camera and is power off menu. And the last part of advanced features that I'm gonna go over is gonna be turn on game launcher and turn on video brightness. Game launcher keeps all of your games and your tablet organized, so it's a lot better off. And video brightness allows you to see HDR content. If you don't have this on, you're not gonna see it correctly. So this will work and it works on a lot of different apps. So you should be all set on that front. Okay, and now we go to the biggest section when it comes to saving battery life. There's a lot to go through here, so let's start taking a look. First, we're gonna hit these little three dots up here, and we're going to go to automation. For automation, you're gonna to wanna to turn these two things on at the top, auto daily optimize and auto restart your set times. So basically what this does is it allows you to reset your tablet as well as auto optimize daily. What this will do is it's going to make your tablet run a lot faster overall. The more you do these automations, the better overall your tablet is going to be, and it's gonna run a lot smoother than it would otherwise. By the way, if you didn't know, you're supposed to turn off your device once a week. How many of you do that? If you don't, start doing it. This will really help your overall performance of your device. Then we go to battery. Now for battery, there's gonna be a lot of things we do here, especially in the background usage limits. In background usage limits, you can already see I have done quite a lot. And that is any app that you do not need to run in the background, you are going to want to turn on deep sleeping apps. So what this does is it stops an app from running in the background. So what apps should you put in here? Anything you don't need to run in the background. So Samsung's built-in stuff like AR stuff, don't need to run in the background. Maybe a purchasing app like B&H or Bob's Furniture, don't need that to run in the background. Hey, you know what I don't need to run in the background? Any game ever, I don't need it to run in the background. Maybe Pokemon Go on my phone, but that's about it. So all of these, constantly run in the background and drain your tablet otherwise. But if you turn this on, you're not gonna have that drainage and your tablet will run much, much better. This alone will save you at least an hour and a half to two hours of battery life just by doing this and the part we talked about earlier where you can also do this with the background data. Some apps like Facebook don't turn on in the background but they do use data in the background, so that is how you stop it from the other angle. And then we're going to more battery settings, and from this section, there are gonna be a couple things you want to know about, such as show battery percentage, fast charge, and adaptive battery. All of these things will help you definitely save battery. Now, you can go to protect battery as well if you do need more, but that will mean that you can only go up to 85%, However, this is better off if you do want your tablet to have a longer, fuller battery life if you plan on keeping it, say, for five years. All right, then the last bit of information here is going to be with the developer's options. Now, it's not available at the start, but you turn it on and your tablet's gonna run much faster. So, first off, we just go to About Tablet, then go to Software Information, and then you're going to scroll a little bit to the middle and go build number. You're gonna tap that repeatedly and then you're just going to simply type in your password. And once you do, you now have developer options unlocked. In developer options, there's one thing you're gonna to want to turn on and that is scrolling all the way down until you get to the drawing category. In the drawing category, you're going to want to go to windows and scale and change each of these to Point five. What this will allow you to do is basically run your tablet at a much, much faster speed. It really does make a world of difference in how quickly your tablet will now respond to everything you need. It's really great for everything you have and it just moves so much quicker now that you have that set. All right, guys, I know that was a long video, but hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure to give me a like, thumbs up, and follow us for all of the other content we're gonna have on this tablet, including the must-have apps, where we go really in-depth into the best apps you want and need for this tablet. 
Thank you all so much for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube tech guy. Thank you so much again for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and comment down below. Also, follow us on social media at YouTube Tech Guy. And check out some more great tech videos on your screen right now.